The Child Within by Christine Larson She never tires of that picture, always finding something, well, she stumbles around her mind searching. And then it pops up. Poignant. That's it. Always finding something poignant about it. It's the best word for what she feels, because sadness is not the one. No, sadness produces lower, slower emotions, the ones that can make her cry without effort. Although truth is, her eyes often fill with tears when she gives herself permission to stare, absorb, dream. And what is that picture? The one that captures Sophia's imagination and her heart? Two glowing toddlers try to touch hands, as once they did, when they were small and innocent, of all that life waits to teach them. The tragedy is that each child is trapped inside the cage of an adult, and those adults sit in a pose of abject despair, back to back. The background is black with a long expanse of city lights far away in the distance, representing modern life's demands, perhaps. Sophia's imagination travels far and wide whenever she loses herself in this picture, but more often than not she is one of those little children, just starting out on her journey encompassing two centuries, and it's yesterday once more. Have you seen her drawings in her school diary, Wall Love? Sophia's mother is flipping through the small blank exercise book, where drawings are on one page and the students rule up the opposite one for writing practice. Last year there were no lines, as the children learnt only to form the letters and start making simple words and tiny sentences. Her father leans over to admire and share the humor as Mum points to the sun in every single top corner, even on the day Sophia has also drawn rain clouds and lightning. She is always the bringer of sunshine into others' lives, and they congratulate her on the increasing number of words she's mastering. Before too long, they will marvel at the amazing stories she can create from pictures seen only by her in her mind's eye. One day a phone call from the principal's office summoned Sophia's parents to the school to hear what seemed shocking news. We want to keep your daughter down in the same grade for the first half of next year. It horrifies mom and dad. Pardon? The child who excels in every scholastic challenge put before her what? The principal and Sophia's current teacher hastened to reassure the couple. It's not because of any failing on her part. Quite the opposite, interrupts the teacher. Sophia is so good and so outgoing. We believe we found a perfect match with her for an experiment. An experiment with my baby girl? The father is frowning, becoming agitated now, and the mother clutches his arm as if fearing he will jump up and shake someone, or worse. No, please, listen to Mr. Baldock. He's been the principal here for fifteen years. He would do nothing to harm or slow down any child, I promise you. Sophia's father sits back in his chair, a little mollified by this reminder from the kind teacher they have trusted implicitly until now. Please, hear me out, the principal continues. This really is an exceptional idea we believe will work well. A withdrawn, painfully shy child will join us at the start of the new year. She has been through some grueling experiences in her brief life, and her current foster parents are hopeful a fresh beginning in another school where no one knows her or her tragic past will be beneficial. The experiment involves your daughter sitting next to Leone and befriending her. We will encourage both girls to share their current assignments or studies, both in and out of class. Sophia is such a friendly, outgoing child. We believe she will make a significant difference to Leone. Now it's the mother's turn to speak. She wants nothing detrimental to happen to the baby of her brood. But what will happen to Sophia's grades? Her whole learning process? Won't she drop back behind her normal classmates, being a year behind? No, Mrs. Weissman, that's the beauty of this experiment. Your Sophia has such a bright little mind and personality. We believe she will cope well, unlikely to miss a beat in her educational progress. It's all because she is so gifted. Trust her, please, and trust us. We would not risk a small, precious brain like hers if we had the slightest doubt. 
As he talks, he stands and comes around his desk to lay a comforting hand on the mother's shoulder. Reluctantly, the Wisemans agree, and at the New Year's beginning, the experiment takes place. To everyone's delight, it was a success. Timid little Leone gained immeasurable confidence with Sophia, the smallest teacher in the school, by her side, doing what Sophia loved best, chattering. Instead of her constant problem of talking too much, Sophia encountered nothing but encouraging words and smiles. When the day came to resume her role in the classroom where she belonged, although there were tears at the classroom goodbyes, when they sought each other's company every recess and lunchtime, the widening their circle of friends quickly made up for their separation. Despite Sophia being a prolific diarist, and later a lengthy but most entertaining letter writer, who brought much joy to family and friends as they settled down in comfy chairs, hot drink in one hand, and the latest Sophia letter in the other, she only dabbled in any kind of fiction writing. She had yet to find her niche, or for her hand and pencil to catch up with her butterfly brain, that insisted on flitting here, there, and everywhere, but landing nowhere long enough to settle to serious writing of her very own. Sophia experimented with short children's stories, and even began a plan of sorts of a story about a callow but eager lad, a storyteller on a Viking ship, entertaining the adventurers on their lengthy trips, rowing across the vast oceans. She soon realized the massive research required to bring reality to her wannabe story, and experimented instead with inspiration closer to home and her own times. At last she summoned the courage to write a story about a pair of ducks and their adventures and misadventures at the hands of humans. After many edits and tweaks, her manuscript winged its way to several publishers, but alas, her hopes and dreams met nothing but rejection. It would be some time before she learnt many of her disappointments were due only to unfortunate timing. A famous children's author from her own country had published a duck story just over a month before. What she did learn was that she couldn't handle rejections. They only convinced her she had an inflated opinion of herself and her writing skill, that she was, in fact, no good and so she packed her words and her dreams away for thirty years. The small child of yesteryear found herself trapped in an adult cage of her own making, her own self-doubt, her lack of self-belief. Sophia filled her life with many things, almost all successful, but somewhere deep inside, the child of creativity lived on in an almost coma-like state. Now and then her eyelids fluttered as if to break out, like a fragile chicken from its protective eggshell, like a butterfly from its chrysalis. Perhaps her deliverance came when she read the plea of a doozy dame who asked for help to choose the title of her book because it's my very first book and I've only just begun. I'm writing a blockbuster and I don't know what to call it. Sophia never knew the catalyst that awoke her child within to place her in the corridor of creativity, standing outside the door of inspiration. Her moment had arrived. The bars of the cage of mediocrity dissolved, the true life-blood of her essential self revealed, and she found adages to strengthen her resolve whenever it wobbled. What doesn't kill me makes me stronger, and think you can or think you can't, either way you're right. Sophia was free to begin her destiny at last. The Child Within by Christine Larson was read by permission from the author. If you like our content, please hit like, share, and subscribe to help support our channel. We support independent authors and storytellers. For more information about Word Whisperers, visit us at www.wordwhisperers.com. You can find more information about Christine and more samples of her works on her website, www.cdcrafty.com. You can also find additional links in the comments section of this video. And, as always, thanks for listening.